morning, siblings in Christ, and welcome to Brownsville United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Greg Reffner, and on behalf of our entire community, I just want you to know that we are so glad that you are here worshiping with us uh, this Sunday morning, or whenever you're watching this video throughout your week. I love many things about being the pastor here at Brownsville. And one of those is our commitment to declaring and demonstrating God's boundless love for all. And here's what that means for us. The bottom line is that no matter who you are, who you love, or where you come from, this is a space where you can feel welcomed, where we pray you would feel welcome, and we pray that you would feel like you can belong. For truly, this is a space where God invites all creation, all of God's people, to come, to be known, to be seen. And that is a good and holy thing. So as you get logged in and settled, um, I want to let you know that you can find everything that you need for this worship service here in the video, including the lyrics to our hymns, and the congregational responses, which you're invited to say, and those will be coming up on the screen um, in bolded words. If you'd like, you can also access a worship bulletin uh, there in the comments section if you'd like to follow along. And would you take just a moment to fill out our virtual online connect card? It's so difficult since we're worshiping online to know who is with us, but we would love to know that you are here and to know how we can be praying for you throughout the week. So that, the link to that online connect card is also just there in the comments for you. Again, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you are a part of our faith family. Let's join our hearts together in the call to worship, shall we? Good morning, and will you please join me in a call to worship? O oh Lord, you have searched us and known us. You know our actions and our thoughts. Even before we speak a single word, you know it completely. No one knows us better than you do. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our bodies show your handiwork. And yet, sometimes we wonder if anything good can come from us, from them, or from this earth. Children of God, come and see all the wonders of God's creation. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen.
scripture this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. And so God, here we are, your servants, waiting and wanting to hear your word for us. And so like Samuel, our prayer today is that you would speak, O oh Lord, because we, your servants, are listening. Amen. When I read this passage from John chapter 1, I just can't help but identify with Nathaniel. What about you? One thing that you have to understand about me is that as an identical twin, I know what it's like to be mistaken for someone else. For the first 21 years of my life, from birth all the way to college graduation, Daniel and I lived in such close proximity to one another that even our closest friends would sometimes mistake us for the other. And you know, I, I, I don't blame them for this. It, it, it makes sense. You try your best to get it right, and, and hey, you have a 50-50 shot either way, so what's the worst that could happen? But I'll tell you what, church. When I moved to Seattle and walked into a room full of people who had never met Daniel, well, even on my first day of seminary, I don't think uh, there was a moment where I had ever felt more seen. So when Nathaniel asks, asks Jesus, how did you know me so well? It, it cuts quick to my soul. Even though Nathaniel had just made a disparaging comment about Jesus' hometown, Jesus saw him even when he was still far off sitting under that fig tree. I wonder, what was Nathaniel doing under that fig tree? Maybe he was just trying to find some reprieve from the sun. Maybe he was looking for something to eat. Maybe he was lonely as he sat there. I also wonder about the tone of Nathaniel's question. How did you know me? How do you know me? Many interpreters hear it as a defensive tone. How did you know me? Others, bewilderment. How did you know me? Some still say that Nathaniel was likely frightened, but you know me? I imagine that there were some undertones of joy in Nathaniel's question. Because I know, like I know many of you do too, it feels good to be seen, to be recognized. 
But you know what? Jesus didn't just see Nathanael. The text says that Jesus knew him. Now, wait just a minute. It's one thing to be seen, but another to be known, right? To be seen is an affirmation of one's presence, the affirmation of one's body in a particular space. But to be known is an affirmation of one's life, one, all of one's life. It's a more intimate kind of encounter. It's, it's like the psalmist says in Psalm 139. Now imagine these words on the lips of Nathaniel. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. Now let me take just a step back, half a step back. When reading these gospel stories, as we'll be doing a lot more of in, in the coming weeks, as we um, get closer to Lent and Easter. When reading these gospel stories, it's always good to, a good idea to take a step back and just ask, what's Jesus doing here? And I don't mean the overly complicated theological answer that your pastor or your Sunday school teacher might want you to say. I mean, just literally, what's, what's Jesus up to? And if you look at the text around this passage, we see that Jesus is simply trying to decide where to go. It's at the beginning of his ministry, where is he going to go? And also, who is he going to take with him? Jesus is calling the disciples, the very same people who are to follow him all the way to the cross. At least, that's the idea, but stay tuned and we'll see how that goes for the disciples. Well, the point here is that Jesus is asking more of Nathaniel. Jesus doesn't want Nathaniel just to believe that he is who he says he is, but like Philip and the disciples before, Jesus wants Nathaniel to follow him. And I would imagine, I would venture a guess that you have probably heard a sermon or two in your life about following Jesus being synonymous with believing in him, claiming to know that he was, he, he is who he says he is, and the Messiah, Son of God, salvation for the world. Maybe these sound familiar. But I wonder, how come we never talk as much about why we should want Jesus to know us? Why don't we talk about why we should want Jesus to know us like Jesus knew Nathaniel or how God knew the psalmist, Psalm 139? Now, I have a theory about this. It's a working theory. But I think, in part, this, this trend that we see of talking about knowing Jesus but not as much Jesus knowing us well, maybe it stems from just how much we as Americans love and cherish our privacy. Now, I grew up in the suburban Midwest. I know some of y'all did too. And hey, we loved our potlucks. We loved our block parties where people would come together and talk about their privacy fences and you know how they cut their yards and, and all of these meaningless things. Again, it's one thing to be seen, but another thing to be known. And are you with me that here in America and largely the Western world, we take great care in revealing who we really are, sometimes even to our closest friends 
and family members favoring small talk over real relationships. It's ironic, actually, I think, that social media, which acts kind of as the public square of our society right now, um, is where we share more about ourselves than, than, again, with some of our friends, family members, church family. Now, now hear me. I'm all for healthy boundaries. Absolutely. But that's not what's at stake here. What is at stake in our text today is how we follow Jesus. And because we love our privacy so much, we, we even try to keep things from God, the one who knit us together in our mother's womb, who, who knows our innermost being, who sees us from far away, says, I know you. It's true, God knows us better than we know ourselves. But there are still pieces of us which we want to keep locked away, separated from God's sanctifying love. Maybe it's the parts of us that never had a chance to apologize. Maybe it's those parts of us that we don't feel are truly seen by others. Maybe it's the parts of us that others have called racist. Maybe we have tried to quarantine these and other parts of ourselves where these places in our lives where we feel anger, shame, and guilt because these are the things we don't want others to see And definitely, we don't want God to see them. But church, to love somebody is to know them. To follow Jesus is to know Jesus. To follow Jesus is to know Jesus, but to also let Jesus know you. And this is the good news today. That God already knows us deeply and intimately. God knows the deepest parts of our lives. God invites us to come and see what life with God is like. Just as Jesus said to, um, Jesus said to the disciples, come and see. And how Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see. This is good news that God knows us. And yet, with every piece of good news, there is a response. And perhaps the response is is just like the news. Let me tell you what I mean. God invites us to come and see what life with God is like in the person of Jesus Christ. And, And our response back to God is, oh Lord, come and see us. Come and see the deepest parts of ourselves revealed to us, our true belovedness, which is the case, but also reveal to us the parts of us that are still in need of your grace. Reveal to us the parts of ourselves which we have tucked away, the parts of us which are in need of your grace and your healing. So this is our prayer, for the Lord God to come and see us. (laughs) Perhaps we will learn a thing or two in that process. Hmm? God is wanting us to be more like Jesus. God wants us to follow Jesus, the Son, become more like him. God wants to grow within us our love for God and our love for neighbor until there is no more room for those former things. This is the work of God. This is the work of God's salvation in our lives. 
it's not just a moment in time. It's not just that moment when Philip and Nathaniel got up and started to follow Jesus. It's their lifetime journey. It's our lifetime journey of inviting Jesus to come and see who we are. To come and see who we are. May our hearts be open to this working of grace. Today, tomorrow, and in all the days to come. Amen. Church, one way that we have been praying for God to come and see who we are in the past few weeks and months is is in how we steward our finances. And so if you feel called today to support the ministry and mission of Brownsville United Methodist Church, you can do so by sending in a physical contribution to our church 
address. You can also use the church address to set up an automatic bill pay through your financial institution, and, and that works well for um, a number of people here. You can also use our secure online giving partner, Tithely, to set up and manage your own one-time or recurring contributions. I also want to give a word here that today is Human Relations Sunday, and throughout the entire month of January, actually, we're, we're taking a special offering for Human Relations Sunday. And this offering supports neighborhood ministries uh, throughout the United Methodist Church, throughout the world, through, communi through community developers, community advocacy through the United Methodist Voluntary Services, and uh, supports work with at-risk youth through youth offender rehabilitation programs. And so today is um, Human Relations Special Sunday, but like I said, you can give to this special and worthy cause throughout the month. So if you feel led to do so, please please do earmark your, your gift with Human Relations Sunday and we'll be sure that it gets to the right spot. So come, friends, let's now offer to God our, our gifts um, with joy and thanksgiving. Holy God, like the first disciples, we have heard the call to follow Jesus. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, make us bold in following. May we give more readily, love more deeply, show mercy and compassion more extravagantly, and seek justice for others courageously. Help us to walk in these steps and in the steps of the one whom we follow. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Now as we continue in prayer, I want to invite you to join me. Another thing I love about Brownsville United Methodist Church is that we are committed to praying for and with one another. And there's many ways we do that. If you have prayer requests that you would like to submit to, to me or to the prayer team, you can do so on our website. We have a section, uh, a tab for prayer where you can submit those. You can email us um, those prayer requests, and we can keep those confidential if you choose. We also have a midweek prayer service. Uh, it's Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific time where we where we come and pray together and, and receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. And that's on Zoom, and you are always welcome to join that time. Here on Sunday mornings, what it looks like is we use a prayer response and so that we can join our hearts together in lifting these prayers to God. And so what that will look like is, as I pray, you will occasionally hear me say the words, Lord, in your mercy. And you're invited to respond with the words, hear our prayer. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. O oh God, we trust in your promise. We trust in your promise that says where two or more are gathered in your name. Your presence is with them. 
So we give you thanks, Lord Jesus, that you are here in our midst. Even though we are gathered together through these virtual means, your, your church, your people are together. We give thanks that you are speaking and that your workings of grace can, cannot be thwarted by virus or safety concerns. We give thanks for the life, for the breath that is in our lungs today, and for this chance to be in community with one another. Thank you for all the ways that joy has been known to us throughout the past week. And by your mercy, Lord, continue to break in to our everyday lives. Help us to be a people who see you in the world and in those around us. Help us to be a people who re-examine the past, reinterpret the mundane, and reimagine the future. The future which you are calling us to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O God, for those in need of peace, strength, and encouragement. For Jessica, Trent, and Carpenter. For Helene, we pray. For Emily, a daughter who is coming home. For Cindy, Justin, and all who mourn this day. For those who are lonely. For Lorraine, Stephen, and Jack. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, God, for those in need of healing. For Susan S., she continues her recovery from a stroke. For Susan T., as she recovers from eye surgery. For Dennis. For Elizabeth. For all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, we pray. And for those who themselves care for the ill and sick, including our doctors, nurses, lab technicians, and so many more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the healing of our nation. We pray for a just and equal sharing of all the resources which the earth affords and for a reckoning to be had, for a reckoning to be had for the ways in which religion and politics, the ways in which our religion and our politics are wielded as weapons against the poor and oppressed and the marginalized. O oh God, come and see your people. Come and see your world. There is so much brokenness and tumult in our midst. We confess that too often we have been part of the problem rather than the solution. But God, let your forgiveness be known to us. Come and see us. Speak your truth to the deepest parts of our souls so that we may more perfectly love you and our neighbor. Come and see us so that we may know the peace and love of Jesus Christ and so that we may freely share that peace and love with all whom we meet. May our lives of, disci of discipleship bleed over into lives that long for justice. Grant to us the grace and power to fearlessly contend against evil and injustice in whatever form they may take, to make no peace with oppression, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, or greed, where there is hatred. Let your church bring love. Where there is injury, 
Let your church bring healing so that we may one day embrace each other and the world as you see us. A world where every nation, every tongue, and every people are deemed of sacred worth. Where no human is declared illegal and all are beloved by their neighbors as they are beloved by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you now to offer your own prayers of thanksgiving, your own prayers of intercession um, to God from your homes, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, knowing that God's love goes beyond that of mother and father. Let's say with one voice. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, church, as we prepare now to be sent, I want to say just two things. One is a word of deep thanks to Matt, to Duena, Priscilla, Noli, all the hands behind the scenes which makes these worship celebrations possible. Thank you. And two... I want to make sure that you hear the invitation to come and be a part of our Zoom coffee hour fellowship time, uh, which happens every Sunday after the service um, at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And this is an opportunity to be in fellowship with one another, to be seen by the community, but also to be known by the community. I look forward to seeing you there. Would you receive now this benediction? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and following, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, church, to serve the Lord. Look forward to seeing you at our Zoom coffee hour and one day soon.